Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. My name's Chris and today we're going to do a failure analysis of what happened to these ratchets. So if you missed my previous video, I'll link to it up above in the cards and you can check it out when you have time. So now let's go look at these ratchets and see how they failed. So here you can see we have the Napa Evercraft ratchet. Now this was the one that uh, ended up performing to the highest torque. And here you can see we have this little tension ring on it. And we'll take that off. Open this up. This actually you can see here is one unit. And it's got a dual Paul design on it, believe it or not. There's three teeth that are engaged. And then when you rotate the selector switch, then that one and there, that pole's now engaged. So if we put that back together, so six teeth at all times, and that one performed really, really well. Peak of, what was it, 70.2 foot pounds. So nicely done, Evercraft. Taking a look here at the Napa Carlisle, Let's go ahead and open this one up. So we again have a single tension ring on this one. So this one might be a little bit more interesting to put back together. So we removed that tension ring and let's go ahead and lift this up here and see what this one looks like inside. Okay, so again here we have one, two, three, four teeth there and four over there. So this one actually, believe it or not, this is a single Paul design with only four teeth engaged at all times. I mean, it performed fairly well. I mean, it wasn't the highest rated one, but at the end of the day, remember, this is quarter inch drive ratchets and anything in my mind over 40, 50, and even 55 foot pounds it's asking way too much of a quarter inch drive and you would never really do that. But we've all been in a pinch where we have the wrong ratchet, we're really deep into a job and we are just going to use it in a situation that's gonna save us time, hopefully, and not end up in failure where you can see that that one snapped right off at the anvil. Again, we didn't have any paw issues or any teeth issues as well and everything in there looks like it should. So again, simply just, just an anvil failure on that one. Now again, that was the Napa Carlisle. We had a single pole on that one and it had five teeth engaged and it performed fairly well. And here we have the Power Torque from O'Reilly, the Husky Tools from Home Depot and the Duralast. And these when you look at them up close, you can see the thickness is really, really similar, if not the same on those. The only really difference in functionality on these is really going to be the handle grip on it. These are still all made out of metal and the stampings, of course, are different, but it'll be interesting to open these up and see functionally if there's any differences in these ratchets. So let's go ahead and open these ratchets up. So now we'll take a look here at the Dura last one. So single paw, three teeth engaged on that Dura last one. Doesn't look like we had any issues with the teeth, no issues with the paws, just simply an anvil failure on that one. Husky Tools from Home Depot. And that one again, single paw, three teeth of engagement. Yep, three teeth of engagement. No issues with the insides of the ratchet. And that's the power torque from O'Reilly Auto Parts. And that one again, three teeth of engagement on a single paw. And those all 
were victim of an anvil failure. So let's take a look at the pause on this. So when we look at the internals on that, I would pretty much say they are all identical. The pawls might have a little bit difference in strength, potentially by the color, no guarantee on that. That could just be part of the manufacturing process. And if we look at the insides of all of these, to me they all really do look like they came out of the same manufacturing plant. Now here is the Motive X Tools one. So let's go ahead and pop this off. So right there, it allows you to get your little pry tool right underneath there. And you can pop that ring off. So let's go ahead and open up the Motive X Tools here. Here you can see you have the insides of that 72 tooth ratchet. Everything looks to be in good and working order in there, no damage. And then here is their secret sauce. Looks like you have six teeth of engagement there. And then on the other side as well, you have another six teeth. Of course, we just put too much torque on there and snap the anvil right off. So outside of that, I mean this ratchet looks to have some of the best machining out of all of them. So we're going to go ahead and put the Motivex tool back together. So if you can look and see here, there's a little notch out on that tension ring and that really helps you get your pick tool underneath it. That also does help with starting just a little bit better. So once we walk that tension ring around at least one side there, then the rest is pretty darn easy. You can just push that around. And this one is really on there tightly. And there you go. You got your tension ring back on and that mechanism is back to working order. Again, minus the anvil that was snapped off in the process of achieving well over 60 foot pounds. So here is the Motive X Tool T-Slide Breaker Bar. And you can see that we definitely went through and we bent that. And because there was so much play in there, that's why that started bending. And this one again, it had that ball detent there and this was spring loaded and that one functioned just as well as any of the other quick release ratchets well over 65 foot pounds on that so now we're going to take a look at the power torque this is a 72 tooth single paw and this one had slippage and failed to me prematurely so now that we have the screws removed, let's go ahead and remove that back plate. And here you can see that it's well oiled up, but you can see all of these metal shavings in there. So we definitely had an issue with this one. And like I said, it had a lot of slippage and you can see that we just destroyed and started to round off the gear on this one. Five teeth that are engaged at all times. And if we look at these, it doesn't feel like there was any issue with the teeth on the paw having an issue. I think this one purely, purely failed due to the wrong metal being used, which was too soft. So while this ratchet might be the easiest to service because of its design, there really isn't much to service on a ratchet like this because the simple fact of the matter is is that if you break this ratchet, there's no parts for it that I'm aware of and you would simply take it back to O'Reilly's and they would swap it with another one that they had on the shelf. So it's actually kind of unfortunate. This is a decent feeling ratchet. 
chrome looks decent on it selector switch is all metal and it's just too bad that it uh, it slipped prematurely and had issues so this would be one that I would have a hard time recommending to anybody even a DIYer I mean you just don't want to have a ratchet fail prematurely like that so let's look at the Pittsburgh professional here and I believe it's not going to be serviceable this would be just the tension screw to keep the swivel head together so we ended up just wedging a screwdriver in there and then when we twist pop that roto head out and here you can see that it is a sealed design and that is not serviceable so there really isn't anything we can do about this one which you know truly isn't an issue to me because I know how the Harbor Freight warranty is and how they back up their items I don't have a problem with that if you were to break this and you needed it warrantied you just bring it in and I'll give you a new one now there are quite a few other brands out there that have similar designs whether it be snap-on whether it be gear wrench or even crescent which is an apex tool brand as well i mean it literally that one literally looks exactly like the gear wrench one um the design on them they're, to me they're pretty much all not serviceable if i recall correctly feel free to correct me if i'm wrong down below in the comments and we got that one all back together here as soon as we tighten this up so not anything we can really look at on this one other than I can tell you without a doubt we just basically sheared off the anvil and that was because we put too much tension on this one and pretty much all of them because that's what we did but all in all I mean really impressed that the whole entire bunch except for that one ratchet here went well over 55 60 foot pounds of torque which is definitely not using the quarter inch drive the way it was designed for. Guys, I look forward to bringing you other quarter inch drive ratchets. And we were even able to procure one of these snap on TLL F72s that we're going to put that in our quarter inch drive ratchet shootout. So, really neat stuff coming, guys. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And as always, guys, Work smarter, not harder, and we'll catch you in the next video. So guys, if I really truly wasn't meant to break quarter inch drive, why on earth would somebody design a quarter inch drive that is over 11 inches long?